Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you give us a like, subscribe, ring the bell, check out our social media, support us on Patreon and PayPal. And uh, this week on the podcast, we have my good friend Alex, the Ohm Homie, bringing it to us. How you doing, Alex? I'm doing good. Thank you. Oh, man. It's so good to be here or to have you here, I should say. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the... Um, this amazing thing that you do with your Tibetan crystal bowls, you do this uh, bowl singing. Sir. I, I mean, I, I'm really, uh, I'm not saying it right. It's, that's why I bring you on here. Why don't yeah, you tell me about it? Yeah, so I do uh, sound meditation. I'm a sound meditation facilitator. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And um, so I also use other sound meditation instruments, um, rain sticks, ocean drums, uh, brass bowls um, and various other uh, sound meditation instruments to uh, basically help people get into deep states of meditation. I dig it, man. Yeah. And I believe uh, at the end of the podcast, we'll be having you do a, uh, a sound meditation for us. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm digging that, man. So what got you into this whole process? Um, so I've been doing yoga... Um, and meditating for quite a while, over a decade, I would say. And um, so yoga was my primary way of meditating, you know, like moving meditation. And um, in 2020, I started doing a lot of meditating at home um, because a lot of yoga studios were closed. And um, so it was really helpful um, to be able to do meditation at home. And um, I would, you know, watch videos or guided meditations on YouTube or, um, you know, any of the, the apps that they have available for that. And um, I've played instruments and, you know, have been into music, creating music for a long time as well for a lot of my life. And so, yeah, it was part of a whole evolution for me of, you know, going from making music and doing yoga and meditating, um, getting the crystal bowls just kind of made sense for me in that way, you know? It was just uh, an evolution. That's pretty fantastic, man. So uh, yeah. what what instruments uh, do you were you playing in uh, when you were doing music, when you were producing music, playing in bands and stuff like that, I'm assuming? Um, I was never in any bands. Yeah. Um, I always mostly did solo things. Okay. Uh, I started with guitar, you know, um, learning pretty basic chords and things like that, you know, and then I started uh, learning uh, music theory um, in conjunction with learning the piano. So that was really helpful for you know, continuing the evolution of understanding music and how it's, how it works and how it's all put together. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why you bring the seven bowls, I'm assuming, right? Because you have sort of like an A, B, C, D, E, F, G going on. Yeah, definitely. So there's uh, seven bowls, um, one for each chakra, one okay. corresponds for each chakra. Um, and, um, you know, it starts at the, at the base with the, with the root chakra, um, that's the C note, and then it goes up, you know, to the D, the E, the F, the G, the A, and the B is uh, the crown, you know, so. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, one of my favorite uh, types of meditation uh, is a chakra-based meditation where um, you um, sync your breath work with uh, bringing awareness to each chakra individually. And then um, you do a inhale as you bring attention to the, um, the chakra. And then on the exhale, you, you, know, you release and um, think of the area around the chakra. And then you do that for each one uh, in ascending order. So eventually you're taking an inhale and bringing awareness to each um, like chakra space at a time. That's really, really, really helpful. Oh, interesting, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I look forward to trying it out a little later, man. Yeah, it's definitely. Cool. I've yeah. never done the sound meditation. I do quite a bit of meditation on my own, and I've been uh, putting together meditation videos for the channel, and I have like a playlist of them all and everything like that. Oh, cool. But uh, the sound meditation, I'm looking forward to it. And it's coincidentally, uh, I think I have... Um, 
it was just our anniversary and Angela scheduled us sound meditation over at the Enchanted Forest, I want to say. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. We're, awesome. I'm looking forward to checking that out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Cool. So what kind of places do you end up doing the, these kind of sound meditations? Um, so I have a regular uh, event that I do them for um, every first and third Thursday at uh, the Container Park um, for downtown yoga in the park. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's something that's really cool and regular. Um, so if you're in Las Vegas, you could come check that out every first and third Thursday. Awesome. Yeah. And that's the Container Park downtown on Fremont Street, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Container Park downtown. And I also, I have done them uh, for the city of Las Vegas, uh, for the employees there, um, for a, a wellness day that or, you know, event that they had. And uh, I'm going to be doing another one with them soon. And um, I also do um, have my own YouTube where I post the videos and I do uh, individual and group uh, sound meditation, um, either at my place or, um, you know, depending on the person or people's needs, I can go to their homes as well. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. And, uh, they can find you on, uh, I know Instagram, they have you there and, uh, mm -hmm. yep. there's, uh, the YouTube channel, Ohm Homie. I can actually pull that up for us real quick. Yeah, so definitely. Got, definitely. You can go to Ohm Homie. Yeah. Uh, Ohm Homie on Instagram and uh, also a SoundCloud that you have available. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, I do the sound meditation um, as an extension of me, you know, really enjoying playing music and making music and creating music and, uh, you know, putting that together with yoga and um, uh, ecstatic dance as well. Uh, I have uh, a workshop that I co-facilitate with a friend and um, it starts off with um, like a guided sound meditation and then goes into a yoga flow and then um, ends with an ecstatic dance. So it's a really great, oh. great little thing. Yeah. Tell me more about ecstatic dance. This is actually the first time I've heard of ecstatic dance. Okay. I mean, I guess... Um, any dance could be ecstatic if you if, <laughs> if you if you uh, if you uh, you know enjoy it enough. Um, but it's really about uh, it's a guided type of uh, situation. So the uh, the guy, the instructor, um, you know, prompts you and gives you um, you know things to do, and uh, it's really helpful especially for people who um, don't necessarily feel comfortable dancing in front of people or don't even don't feel like they can dance, you know, um, because it, it gives you things to do and it kind of helps to take your mind out of it. Yeah, but it's really it's really fun. It gets pe pe people moving, you know, so oh, yeah, fun, it's really man. awesome. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to come check out uh, one of your sessions, man, pretty soon. Yeah, I, definitely, uh, yeah. I know Angela would love to do that ecstatic dance thing. She's a goober. She'll she'll do that on her own, you know, dancing yeah. around the house. Yeah, that's awesome. Making me laugh and such, man. So. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, um, dance and movement um, is really great for, um, you know, just releasing the energy and uh, expression, you know, so... Yeah, it's definitely really helpful and definitely a cool thing for people to, you know, be able to embrace the just goofiness of, you know, what it is to be, I guess, a human, a goofy human, you know. <laughs> uh, this awareness <clears throat> taking uh, incarnation in human form that we Yes, exactly. Are, right? Yeah, definitely. We are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So is that the uh, that's another thing. So is this uh, is this like non non denominational or is it like Buddhist? Is it Hindu or? Um, you... So the name of the workshop that we do is called Samadhi Soul State. Okay. Um, which is a Sanskrit word um, that kind of means bliss, like yeah. a state of bliss, you know. Um, but it is uh, like pretty much non denominational. Yeah. We we don't you know really uh, dive deeper into any of the philosophy or theology of uh, Buddhism or anything really, you know? Yeah. Uh, I 
try to keep away from that because, you know, people are going to believe whatever they want to believe already. And I don't want, you know, it to take away from what you could gain from the experience. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I dig that, man. So that's cool, man. And you have a, uh, what is it? There's a festival coming up. The High Vibe Festival coming up on August 28th. Yes, yes. And I think I have. So um, uh, as part of that workshop um, that that I co-facilitate, uh, I do the sound meditation with the crystal bowls and uh, other sound instruments. And then I also play live music during the yoga part. And then I have music that I've been making for the ecstatic dance part. So... Um, the festivals, um, are kind of just a way for us to be able to reach more people and to, you know, spread the joy of meditation and dance and movement. But yeah, High Vibe Fest, uh, is coming up. It's the first weekend of May, I believe. Oh, is that, that's the one coming up right now? Oh, this is one I have here is, uh, oh, I was thinking... It was the one on August 28th. This must be an old website. Oh, dang, it might be, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. This, so this one is uh, May um, 6th through the 8th. So I think it technically might be the second weekend. Okay. Um, because May, I think, starts on the Friday before. So um, technically second weekend, but yeah, it's the 6th through the 8th. Um, highvibefest.com, I think, might be... Um, the the best way to find it okay and it's here in las vegas huh uh it's actually in uh grass valley california grass valley california mm -hmm. so it's I see it. uh, yeah it's about eight hours from las vegas um but i'm really excited for that um you know to be surrounded by uh forest and you know in california i'm really excited to be able to bring the offering out there and uh, just to be able to connect with people and um you know just really keep the high vibes going you know that's beautiful man i totally dig that that's uh that's what it's all about yeah, yeah when you definitely. when i saw the uh the august 28th i was gonna say that's uh we're going to uh burning man that weekend oh, that okay, week okay. as it were oh yeah. yes so awesome. that's gonna be a lot of fun man that's uh, awesome have you so you've been before then no this is gonna be my first oh. time oh okay i am really pumped about it yeah, yeah. that's awesome I, I don't know have no idea what to expect besides a lot of dust and uh, chaos, man. But yeah. it's quite the process. Like uh, I don't know if I, have you ever been to Burning Man? I never have. No, no. Uh, I've been to a number of festivals, but def not Burning Man yet. No, no. Uh, that's definitely on the list. But oh yeah, man. Yeah. I'm taking I'm taking my dad out there. His birthday's August 28th, and that's when it kicks off. So I'm taking him out there for his 71st birthday. Whoa, that's like, awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun, man. I don't know what he's gonna get into, but it's, <laughs> he's an animal. I'll go out and party and. I'll fucking hand him a big bag of mushrooms and let him just run around the festival and have a blast. You know yeah, I mean? definitely. Oh, he's, I've never been, but I have a bunch of friends that have gone and, you know, they all really love it. And, um, you know, they all look forward to it every year and it's a, it's a great, great bash I've heard. So I'm sure your dad will have a great time. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That sounds great. Oh yeah. The, the process is intense, man. I've been, uh, talking with a city planner and, uh, got to come up with blueprints and it's like a 40 page form I have to fill out for my campsite and oh, wow. all these regulations. Yeah. I did not know what I was getting myself into when I started planning a campsite out there, man. Wow. Yeah. So, but that's awesome. You're not just going and spectating, you're going in. Oh yeah. We're participating. Participants. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. that's kind of like the whole, when you read the, the 10, principles or whatever of it right it's like yeah. supposed, everything's supposed to be a gift for the community so yeah definitely yeah. we're going up there we're, we're doing a um meditation yoga chanting kind of thing man so i'll be doing sunrise uh yoga into uh, like 10 minutes a chance into into meditation oh wow uh, every yeah. day and then we'll do another one at sunset and then we'll transition into like a drum circle and give people water and Gatorade and shit like that, you know, just yeah. like a nice thing. We're calling it the Zen center of love. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. That sounds great. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Definitely, man. You have to let me know how it is and uh, maybe I can go next year. 
dude, you would be more than welcome to come with us, bro. And you'd fit right in. We can have you be doing your bulls every single day, you know? Yeah, and Contribute definitely. to the whole vibe that we're already got going. Yeah. That would be a perfect fit. Definitely. I oh. am. I'm there. Yeah, man. <laughs> I dig it, bro. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Uh, festivals are great, you know, um, great way for people to, you know, get away from these social constructs that we've uh, put on ourselves, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it gets... Uh... It gets kind of ridiculous out in the real world when you're just trying to, uh, you know, earn a paycheck and pay your rent and not starve and, yeah. you know, some kind of social hierarchy system that you're trying to involve yourself with, man. And yeah. You just get away from all that and be around this sea of people who have no idea who you are. They don't give a shit. It's just a bunch yeah. of love and yeah. good vibes and good tunes and energy, man. Definitely. I didn't really listen to house music before 2012. Yeah. And uh, I went to EDC the first year I was out here in Vegas. Oh, I've never been. Oh, man. It's it's a good time. It's definitely a good time, a good experience to to be a part of at least one time. Um, it is a lot. It's definitely a lot in a small area, you know, so it can be a little bit overwhelming for some people uh, or just at times for anyone, you know, there's a lot going on, 100,000 people every night. But uh, I went 2012 and... Um, I had an experience. I had a, you know, uh, a come to Jesus moment. Nice. In the sense of like, uh, you know, just epiphanies about life and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, not that I'm religious or anything. It was just the saying. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, at that point, kind of understood more what house music kind of is about and like you know represents and brings people together and like you know the basis of it is like kind of um, especially like rave culture was like the uh, plur is like peace love unity and respect oh cool yeah i yeah. never heard that before oh okay okay yeah. yeah so that's like something that was you know introduced during like the 90s and the rave scene and stuff it was like that was their whole ethos their model or uh, motto you know yeah nice man yeah yeah raves are fun man it's a lot, a lot of people just like wanting to dance and uh yeah take psychedelics and look at cool lights and listen to you know big loud ass music man and and yes. a lot of it doesn't even have any words in it it's like when uh, some of my friends are just like it's the, the number one like universal music man you know it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know it doesn't doesn't want to um uh, you know divide anybody or take any stances you know it's just like here's some awesome beats man yeah you know, yeah dance your brains out all night long yeah definitely it yeah. definitely helps uh to you know get out of your head when it's more of just of a of a beat right oh, yeah. and it's just like constant and um it can make some people uncomfortable almost and anxious a bit but i think it, it might be because you're kind of forced to deal with you know, like the thoughts and emotions that might come up from having to, you know, it's like almost like meditation, you know, yeah. it's, yeah, almost like puts you in a space where you have to like, just acknowledge and move on and, you know, don't get hung up on the whole, everything you got going on in your head, you know, just be there. Yeah. yeah. That's the, that's the ticket, right? Be there, be here now. Yes, right? sir. Now. Yep. I even have my shirt on right now, my Ram Dass yeah, shirt. Be here yeah. now. It's the only yes. thing, man. You know. Yeah. And uh, that's that's one of the one of my big mental tools I have, which is like, uh, you know, anytime I get lost and or like get caught up in thinking I'm real or caught up in some moment, my emotions are flaring. I'm just like, where are you? You know, and it's like mm -hmm. right here. And it's like, what time is it, man? It's right now. It's yeah. always been that way. Yeah. And uh, and you kind of go. Oh, fucking up you know because i'm like because <laughs> i'm not right here i'm up here you know and yeah. I'm lost in these thoughts and getting caught up and thinking that uh any of this bullshit really matters or like yeah these conflicts are real and it's just like no nah, man just love everyone and be present and yeah and stop thinking that anything is like so personalized you know projections and all that bullshit that we yeah. get going on yeah definitely you know uh like the gift and the curse 
that is consciousness kind of yeah. <laughs> you know like and i read this thing and it said that uh our brain's job is not to think you know our brain's job is to keep us alive and yeah. to you know keep us you know going yeah, absolutely and when you're thinking that's that's not what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> you know what i mean in a way it's like you're supposed to be there and not up in your head about what could have or should be, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 Should's a cognitive distortion, man. Yeah, That's part exactly. of cognitive behavioral therapy. Anytime you're saying it should be like this, it shouldn't be like that, yeah. you know, I want the world to exist in the manner that I imagine it to be in, and it doesn't, and that pisses me off. It's just like, no, nah, man, it's just like, that's negative th thought processes, man. Things yeah. that are going to drive you into depression and rage. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's a survival mechanism, right? It's that whole um, thing of like looking for problems or potential problems and always trying to suss out what could happen next. Where's the danger coming from? Mm -hmm. And in, in our world, it's like there isn't a lot of that anymore. And so it starts trying to put it into places where it doesn't belong or doesn't exist. And you start your perception of reality starts getting all fucked up and you think everybody's like either plotting about you behind your back, talking shit about you. Nobody likes me, you know, or it's just like, you can't trust anybody. And, uh, you know, you kind of turn into your own worst enemy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it definitely happens. And, you know, that's why, you know, things like meditation and, you know, yoga, uh, are great, you know, cause it helps to get you out of that it helps get you in the moment when you have to focus on things, you know. It's just like snowboarding for me almost in a way. When I'm snowboarding, all I'm thinking about is not falling. Yeah. And, it, you know, and <laughs> as I'm going down the mountain, just focused on, like, having fun and, like, not falling, I just, everything else goes away, you know. It's just the ride. It's just the flow. It's just, like, you know, breathing and keeping your body upright it's like very awesome for meditation in that way absolutely and yeah. that's it right that's the ticket you have an object of focus mm -hmm. you're not in your thinking mind you're just present mm -hmm. and that's really all you know and i try to explain that kind of thing to people about what why meditation is important and and what it really is because it's like they go i can't clear my mind i can't clear all my thoughts out i don't even know where to begin to stop thinking and it's like it's not about that man you know it's about putting your uh, awareness on an object of focus and just concentrating on that one thing for this allotted amount of time, this gift you've given yourself, right? And you sit down on it, you just be, be grateful that your day has come to this place where I'm going to take this time just to collect myself and concentrate my awareness on this object of focus and remove myself from this like problem solving, you know, game that I am constantly going through of what I'm going to do next and you know all this yeah. bullshit that you're going through in your head yeah and just be yeah just be take present. a breath man <laughs> yeah yeah you know um so uh yeah you know taking a deep breath uh consciously is is so uh beneficial uh and um just important that w I think we can take it for granted and you know it it seems like such an easy simple thing but many times i think uh people aren't even really we're not really focused on our breath most of the time right it's just something that we do mm -hmm. uh and it is part of our like default mode right to just breathe yeah otherwise we die and um so the you know like the default mode network um is like part of your brain that um, when you do things like psychedelics, like mushrooms and things, um, it will maybe not shut that off, but it like severs the connection between the default mode and, you know, like uh, your like conscious like thinking. So it's like um, when you uh, are doing breath work and meditating, you're like, on purpose turning off that default mode and it's helping you be in the present moment and you know breathing has become such a you know thing that we don't even think of that 
were like separated from it and uh it kind of like you know has kept us you know uh the kind of trapped in our own heads you know oh yeah 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 and we have this like default program setting that we come out with and uh it's about breaking that down and reprogramming that that default program that you you're running under all the time you know an yeah. attachment of the ego and attachment of to the physical world and you know grabbing at things to try to bring uh you some kind of satisfaction you know and that just never ends uh and it's nice to just sit and stop doing that for a second and recognize that you don't need any of the shit you never did yeah it's not going to bring you any kind of uh any more peace than what's already within you and uh and that's for me that's like one of the most important things man is just to let go of everything and be uh sitting on my cushion you know in the morning and at night and just reminding myself because i get so caught up it's so easy it's such a convincing you know like it's like the illusion of maya you know the world around us of the five senses that we get so entrapped in and so convinced of yeah and then uh and you just like by the end of the day you know especially um and I lately I've been I've been working nonstop, man. It's just been chaos out there in the entertainment industry. And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's where I met you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, and so it's like, it's I start catching myself just really um, getting just caught up by that whole process. And I, I definitely take a big notice of um, the difference between my meditation when I first wake up and the meditation as I'm going to bed. And it's just like it's much, much more difficult at night after I've gone through a whole day of bullshit mm -hmm. and interactions with people and like accomplishing all these things and functioning in the world. It's like your brain is just fucking going, man. And it's yeah. like, Let's slow it down, bud. You know, slow yeah, down. Yeah, definitely. Get Take back to the breath. Yeah. And yeah, I, I spent so much of my life just doing that and existing in that. And uh, yeah. And I talk to people all the time that like, I don't know, I can't go to sleep. I can't do all these things. You know, I need to drug myself to go to sleep. Then I need to drug myself to wake myself up because I'm groggy because I took drugs to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's just this uh, ruthless uh, cycle that we get on, man, that I was definitely a part of as well. That really started to resolve itself once I started the meditative practice. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's kind of a result of you know, the, our society and, you know, the way we live and all of these, you know, constructs that we've put on ourselves uh, to, you know, make order of the world or whatever. But, yeah, it, it kind of creates that, um, you know, there's, it creates, like, distortions and imbalances in your nervous system, yeah? And, yeah. and that stuff imprints on your body. And uh, there's this really interesting book. It's called um, The Body Keeps the Score. Oh, I haven't read that. By Basil Vanderkirk, I think is his name. And um, it's really an amazing book where he explains that, um, you know, your body through your nervous system literally remembers, you know, everything. And so trauma, you know, especially um, imprints in your nervous system and... Um, you know how when, you know, you squeeze a, a lime and the juice like, shoots out your eye, but you're able to close your eye before it even gets to your eye? Yeah. It's because your nervous system sees it coming before you even do. Yeah. And it closes your eye. But it does the same thing with trauma, you know, and, um, you know, situations where you get anxiety or things like that is your nervous system kind of remembering, you know, a, a thing that made you anxious or made you feel like you had to be that way. So it's definitely uh, good to be able to, you know, feel through it and like, you know, use br breath to, you know, slow it down. Yeah, I'm always diving back into that, man. Even just walking at work or something like that, you know, from, from front of house to backstage, I was just doing it on the last gig. I was always like, big deep breaths man you know there's nobody around nobody to talk to and it's just like oh I start by the time i get backstage you know i've done like six to eight of those and yeah. i'm just 
feeling great again. Yeah. It's just that was real, those moments in the day where you can take for yourself and you don't even have to sit down on the cushion uh, to really get the benefits of like coming back to it, recognizing what you're doing with yourself and like Mm -hmm. getting out of your head for two seconds and just following your breath. Um, Yeah, that makes just a world of difference, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just taking deep breaths and being present and yeah, I do it at work sometimes, you know, if I feel frustrated or something, I'm like thinking something in my head and I'm not being present. I'm just like, take a breath, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I uh, pep talk myself a lot. <laughs> you got to, right? I do, I do the same thing, man, where yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's a, a communication of like recognizing like, look at that. You're just totally lost in this this imagination process of like some event that's never going to take place and you're like weighing out the possibilities of your actions of what could happen if this goes down or when it goes you know and it's just like yeah none of it's fucking real yeah you know and none yeah. of it matters but you're just so entrapped by this illusion you're creating in your own head yeah that you're not paying attention to what's going on at all yeah and also getting emotionally tied to it too that's the other thing you know you can start mm-hmm. actually having emotional and anxiety reactions to these uh, you know hypothetical situations mm-hmm. that that we all know are never going to occur yeah and you know it's like uh, anxiety is when you're thinking of the future right and then depression is when you're stuck in the past yeah and so yeah it just goes back to what you know we're talking about and um, you know the whole point of meditation and um, you know, like why I got into doing yoga and meditation. Uh, I just thought it was awesome at first. You know, I was like, oh, this is a great workout. Yeah. You know, and um, not knowing that kind of slowly I was, you know, bringing myself out of my like super like thinking in through my subconscious, you know, into like my forward brain, which is, you know, conscious thought and like regulated thought and, you know, controlled and stuff like that. So that's funny. That's exactly how it happened to me, man. I started doing um, yoga lessons every week, okay. and uh, and through that practice, you know, I started really finding myself in such a great headspace at the end of it, which I wasn't expecting, and uh, and it was just so consistent. You know, it was like every you know, I was like looking forward to it, man. Yoga time. Yeah, and I knew like this is going to be rough, but by the time I get through it, I'm just going to be in such a pleasant state of being. You know, my body's going to feel great, but my mind's going to be focused because I mean, yeah. you really have to maintain focus, holding all those postures and breathing throughout. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're always in, in yoga, you're always following your breath through one motion and then letting it go through the next. And uh, and so when you sit, sit there for 90 minutes, just following your breath and going from posture to posture, I mean what a huge effect that has on your consciousness oh yeah and uh and through that i started going like well i'll i'll try some more of these exercises you know you're you got your toes in the water and you start going deeper and deeper until you're like i mean whatever let's do all this weird stuff you know yeah definitely yeah i mean um hopefully i think and i think it does do this for a lot of people it definitely helps open them up to you know things outside of themselves and outside of their you know created reality and self-image and things like that you know it really helps to ground you um it all kind of it all ties in together you know um it kind of reminds me of you know doing something like mushrooms in a way you know because you have to be there you have to be right there or you can get lost in your thoughts and then <laughs> then your trip turns bad, you know? Oh, yeah. And so, like, meditating while doing psychedelics is, like, so awesome and, like, so beneficial and it really kind of helps to amplify, you know, those positive thoughts that you try to align with. And, um, yeah, it's actually really interesting. Um, 2020 was, like, a rough year, obviously, for everybody, yeah? Oh, yeah. And um, I went on a road trip with my bowls and uh, I was uh, just traveling through California doing, you know, sound meditation everywhere at the park, at, you know, Lake Tahoe, like at the ocean. 
And uh, I was reading this book called How to Change Your Mind. It's by Michael Pollan. And uh, he, uh, yeah, basically did a bunch of research on the history of um, psychedelic research, you know, research on psychedelics. And um, uh, in the 50s, they started, you know, allowing psychologists and doctors to prescribe it for therapy. Yeah. And between 1950 and 1965, it was just a bunch of studies were done on the on the benefits of um, like psilocybin, especially. And um, yeah, it, you know, helps with, you know, quitting smoking and uh, alcoholism and um, PTSD as well, especially like for combat veterans. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to me, it all made sense, you know, like the yoga aspect and like the conscious thought. And then, you know, that uh, psychedelics were put here to help humans, you know, who are trapped in their, you know, like default patterns and like those imprinted negative emotions and things like that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I had an epiphany and I was like, I'm going to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going back to school to um, first. I'm gonna want to be a, a sound therapist, and that's beautiful. Yeah, do psychedelic assisted therapy as well. I want to do that too, man. The I was I've been researching. I know Berkeley is offering classes now in it, and uh, and I re I really like for me. It just seems like such a beautiful thing to be able to give to people. And honestly, and I do that for people already. You know, I help my family and I've helped my friends and like, you know, they, they're kind of weary about the process and we'll go in, into a comfortable setting and, uh, you know, experience these wonderful, uh, experiences together and they come out just, uh, different people, man. Just, yeah, they kind of, you know, there's, there's these revelations that you have, these epiphanies, as you were saying that, uh, happen in that process where you kind of recognize, um, that you were a little bit disoriented in in the world, and that what you thought was real was more of a perception of reality, not actual reality. Yes. And so you can really start fixing all your stuff. And like, and I really like it because um, what people tend to call bad trips is really um, the psychedelics showing you all your bullshit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like, yep. and, and as a student of Zen, that's one of the things that we constantly get to is that like this is a practice of removing your bullshit right you're mm -hmm. you have all these um perceptions of how things are or should be or what you are or what you think you should be doing and all this stuff and like it's holding you back from seeing things like seeing the world without a filter on it mm -hmm. you know you don't just see the 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 true love going on around you all the time and you can always turn that to shit and just say, well, I think it's not great, you know, and there's always a reason that it gets, it could not be great, but it's just this beautiful existence that we get to live. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's helped so much, and uh, it helped me in, immensely. I used uh, psychedelics as a form of therapy, as well as a therapist, to, <laughs> um, you know, during the, the 2020, uh, you know, I had all this time, so I was like, you know, started with microdosing and, and talking to therapists and like working out all my bullshit and heavy meditation cycles. And man, it changes your whole life. I'm, everybody's constantly telling me now, like you're a fucking different person than when I met, you know, was hanging out with you in 2019. Like you're just, I don't know what happened to you. And it's like psychedelics and meditation. Cause yeah. I'm just in love with everything. You know, our buddy Sean, who I'm having on the podcast, you know, we get into oh, it a yeah. lot. And he's always calling me Mr. Sunshine. And he's like, you're too happy, man. You got to stop all this happy bullshit. And I was like, I, I don't know how to do that, man. I, I only know how to love everything at this point in my life. It's it's yeah. wild. And I never thought I'd be that guy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I might have met you before, like, years yeah. ago. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I was lost. I mean, so. you know, we all can get lost in our in our own sauce, you know how they say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, it does change you. Uh, you know, uh, I have people in my life that I'm like, Oh, I just wish 
I just wish he could yeah. experience this. <laughs> you and they know? refuse. They go, I got to have control. I yeah. can't let go of control. And I got, yeah. well, if you would take these with me, you'd recognize that control is an illusion and you you have no control over your own life. I mean, you yeah. can move your life. You can be a responsible adult, right? And you mm-hmm. can do everything right and life will still fuck you over or tragedy is still going to happen or you're still going to get hit by that bus crossing the street you know and there's just nothing you can do about any of that man and like letting go of that control and recognizing that you're like observing this incarnation going through its existence from a place of awareness as opposed to a place of ego you know Mm -hmm. saying i am the awareness observing jason as opposed to i am jason right yeah it's a big fucking step back where a lot of anxiety dissolves away and you can kind of just be at peace and and let go and just have faith that this is gonna it's gonna work out the way it's gonna work out and i'm not saying it's gonna work out great or even good per se but what i'm saying is that me being anxious all the time about that is not helping it and it's not going to change it yeah and letting just letting go you know that's yeah. such a huge deal definitely yeah it's it's hard to you know realize that you don't have control that control is just an illusion you know yeah and uh when you're, you're doing something like you know uh, like when you're on a psychedelic trip it definitely makes you aware that <laughs> de- you're really not in control you know and um it's almost like it almost i've kind of called it it's like giving yourself anxiety on purpose <laughs> <laughs> it definitely can be that way. you know um uh, but it's helpful in that you know you realize that that's what those the state that that could put you in but it's not the state that we live in a majority of the time you know and yeah. it's like created by your mind and yeah when uh, with psychedelic therapy, um, like one of the big things is, uh, you know, when something negative comes up, uh, don't run from it. You know, yeah, you're that's not supposed to. you're not supposed to. You're supposed to go straight straight through it. Yeah, and feel the the feelings, you know, and the emotions, and that's like a big thing as well with, um, uh, like you know, our society, and like especially with men, you know, it's like we're supposed to not feel we're supposed oh, yeah. to not have Bunch feelings you know what i mean yeah and like you know i i was thinking about this the other day and like even if you know a man like never had a traumatic experience that was like you know a specific thing that happened uh ignoring your feelings is a traumatic thing to have to like bottle that stuff up is oh, yeah. not good, you know, so. Totally. It's like the people that like hold back their tears. I'm not going to cry at this. You know, it's like, yeah. it's a beautiful scene in a movie, man. You're <laughs> yeah. You to feel that. Yeah, bro. Yeah. There's like he got wrong. the job. Like, yeah. Pursuit of happiness. You know, he exactly. got the job. Like, yeah, it's okay, man. You know? <laughs> it, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's wild, man. But they got to go. I'm a, I'm a tough guy. I'm, yeah. I'm a super tough guy. Don't you mess with me. Yeah. And uh and that's just, you know, that's just all part of the the ego and like like we we're saying the survival mechanism that is the brain, you know, cuz it's a dangerous world out there, right? And like yeah. there's definitely good reason to be strong and uh dangerous yourself. I definitely don't disagree with that, but we take it to such a place to where we're never allowed to just be this loving awareness within us that can experience this world for what it is it's always got to be through this filter of like you know the the ego the self the tough guy you know or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call yourself uh, in your life you know there's a million different things to, to label your identity with you know mm-hmm. and they're all bullshit it's, yeah that's the thing that the psychedelics show you too and they, that people really can't stand is that you're full of shit <laughs> you know you are and uh and that it's okay, but maybe you're not going to do that anymore because it's like blatantly thrown in your face, you know? Like, mm, yeah. As a teenager, I was always like, I'm the metal guy, you know? And like, it's, it, it defined who I was. I was this metal guy, bass player, you know? And I uh, I could smoke more weed than anybody, you know? And I, I drank like a fucking sailor. And like, all these things were like emotionally like tied to my ego super hard. And, uh, and, the psychedelics bring him up and go really 
You know, mm -hmm, you yeah. think this is what you are and you're proud of that, huh? You know, you're proud that you can drink more than everybody. That's called alcoholism, bud. And <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> and uh, and you're you're lying to yourself about it and you're yeah. acting like it's a point of pride when really it's a point of weakness. And you should probably do something about that. Yeah. Like now. Yeah. You know? Not in a couple weeks. Like, how about we quit drinking tomorrow? And, uh, and, and honestly, like a big, you know, big mushroom trip. And I was just like, I guess I don't drink alcohol anymore, you know? And that sucked. It was hard to do, uh, cause I was an alcoholic and I was physically addicted to the substance, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. but it's like, you don't have a choice anymore. It, it takes your perspective and just rips it away from you and, yeah. and, and brings you to this place of clarity where you, you recognize how full of shit you really are. And that's, yeah. You know, people have a lot of problems with that, man. I have a lot of Definitely. people I talk to, and I go, you just got to take more. <laughs> <laughs> Do it like 17 more times yeah. in a row, and then come talk to me, because yeah. at that point, you'll you'll be like vegetarian and sober and like exercising all the time and like only drinking water and like all these you just like start going i don't need anything what am i doing i'm glad i'm grabbing at all this bullshit for no reason yeah man and it's making me miserable yeah i can't even see it yeah no definitely it's like the that it's like uh unpeeling that onion that is your like true self you know yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah it's 2020 um i uh so my birthday is in April and like April 26th, Bro. I like, w w yeah, uh, my, my birthday is April 23rd, but April 26th, I like woke up after like pretty much drinking for like three days straight. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and this, I wasn't on psychedelics, but I do kind of attribute my ability to, you know, like be aware enough to realize that this isn't, hasn't been beneficial to you. Like from doing psychedelics and meditation, you know? And then I like, quit drinking that day and I didn't drink for like over a year. And like, I'll occasionally drink here and there, like socially, you know? Um, but yeah, I would, I was definitely, I feel like a uh, border, borderline, uh, you know, they, they have a thing. It's like, um, like substance abuse disorder. So it's like yeah. not necessarily an alcoholic or, you know, that word but it's like definitely uh a an issue for people and like you know it's um i i realized that i was like using alcohol to uh escape you know and and not feel instead of you know like confronting the 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 real issues and like feeling through you know things that uh, like I really needed to like process and think through. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it kind of does go back to like not wanting to express emotions and feel your feelings. You know, it's like you kind of have to, otherwise you're just gonna, it's going to build. You're going to oh, yeah. put more layers on that onion, you know, and then like next thing you know, you're just, like a shell of a person, you know, you're not that loving awareness that, you know, we're truly meant to be, you know? Absolutely, man. You know, and that's, uh, you know, and that goes back to, it happens to you every day, you know, like I was saying in the morning, my meditation is super easy. I've just woken up, everything's clear. And I meditated before I went to sleep. So like I did a lot of work already. And so mm -hmm. it's like, it's simple, but then I go through the day and that onion starts wrapping over the top of me and I start getting opinions and I start thinking that any of this bullshit matters and that uh, I'm going somewhere or I'm trying to attain something and it's just like, no, man. And, you know, you got to sit down and you go, fucking peel this onion off me before I go to sleep, you know? I mean, yeah. Just, let, me get, well, let me just sit down. And that's always <laughs> the harder one for me, you know? And yeah. But it's this practice of, like, um, you know... Um, we talk about it, uh, my, my, my Zen master's always saying it to us. He's like, don't read Zen books. He goes, it doesn't matter what you think you know. He goes, there's only the practice. <laughs> he goes, you could know everything there is to know in the world. You still just, just do the practice, be present, and continue to do the practice because it's going to keep coming at you. And it's going to, and like knowing how to do a pull up doesn't mean you can do a pull up, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, I know I could sit there on the cushion and just clear my th that doesn't matter though, you know, and it's yeah. like you can know all this Zen philosophy bullshit, 
but it doesn't matter because you're not doing the practice every day, which is the process of removing those layers of onion constantly. And it just keeps folding back over for me. I mean, and mm. I'm, I'm sure for most people that's the case, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm that's, it definitely happens to everybody every day. Right. You yeah. Know, you have to like be as aware as possible so that when something outside happens, it doesn't add on to you, you know? It's just like meditation, you know, it's like, uh, I do some sound meditations out outdoors at things. And, uh, that's like a good example, a perfect example of, you know, the, like, um, like the metaphor of like, uh, meditation, like is life, you know, it's like, uh, when you're going through life and, or when you're like doing a meditation that's outdoors and you hear like, a police helicopter <laughs> go by, <laughs> which has happened. Yeah. And sirens or whatever it is, it's like the point is not to block it out because yeah. like you're never going to be able to block it out. You, you can't like turn off, you know? So the point is to, you know, acknowledge it, like accept it and then like move on. Yeah. You know? And like observe the reaction even, you know, when something yeah. like that happens and this like maybe... Maybe anger rises up in you, you know, or frustration rises up in you because it's like, God damn it, I'm out here trying to be peaceful. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and but instead of what like, the fuck? yeah, right? <laughs> like, Don't they know I'm meditating? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but uh, you know, instead of like, you know, uh, getting involved with that and like believing it, right? And then yeah. like we were saying, you know, it's it's because it's bullshit, right? It's just your perceptions getting in the way of things. It's mm -hmm. like you observe it, you know, you can say, look at that, my, my, my anger rising from within, you know, where did mm -hmm. that come from, you know? Like, yeah. that wasn't there a second ago. And yeah. look, there it is, anger, plain as day, right in front of me, man. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, that process of, like, noting it, just going, boop, you know? Mm -hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. And then it goes... It like dissipates and doesn't have this power over you because you're not the anger, right? You're not the thought of anger, right? Yeah. Your thoughts don't, um, your thoughts don't define who you are. And so when you can step away from those things, you just observe them as another random thing going through your brain, and and you just go, "Isn't that cute?" Yeah. Look at, look at Jason trying to convince <laughs> me that he's real. Yeah. You know? Trying to pretend like he's angry. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, uh. it, dude. It's just like, you know, like when I was doing, you know, the, when I was using the crystal bowls at this outdoor event and, um, you know, something like that helicopter passing over my head. And um, I did, I, I realized that for a second that I was like, oh, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> you know, but then like before I could even like, you know, react outwardly. Cause like, what am I going to do? You know, yeah. like yell at the helicopter. No, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to do anything. I was just like, oh, that was interesting. Like that, like that almost made me angry, <laughs> you know, that almost made me frustrated. And then I was, you know, just like able to get back into it, you know, cause it's like very much, uh, uh, a practice of being uh, present and, um, you know, um, like being intentional when I'm doing this sound meditation because, you know, I, I've experienced moments, especially early on when I would, you know, guide the meditation where I realized, oh shit, like what was I, where was I just now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and then I, you know, realize it's very much about intention, you know, and it's very much about being like presently intentional with everything that I'm doing, you know, otherwise that can, I feel like translate to like other people, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And so like, you know, Mr. Sunshine, even if ah. like your energy, as if that were a bad thing. Right? I know. <laughs> he, he says it like he's insulting me, and then I just give him a big hug and tell him how much I love him. And he's just like, ah, oh, you got to hug me every time you see me. I was like, every time I see you and every time you leave, bro. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. it's Because yeah, that's the game, man. You know, you, you recognize... And it's like, um, you know, in, in, in Buddhism, it's called the Bodhisattva, right? You find nirvana and you recognize this beautiful state of bliss and, 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 and happiness and clarity. And it's like, 
well, I can't just stay here all by myself, you know, because like to get there, you're letting go of all your attachments and your desires. So it's like, I'm not just going to hang out here by myself. That would be selfish. I'm going to come back to reality and mm-hmm. I'm going to fucking spread this love all over everybody's faces, man. You yeah, know? for sure. And show them how much love is the potential of love that exists within all of us. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I and I see it in more and more people, you know, like immediately me and you were, you know, connected, you know, and it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. you can recognize that love in people and people that have opened themselves up to it. Yeah. And yeah. people that haven't, they... You, I, I'm drawn to as well, especially if they'll talk, if they want to just go fuck all that bullshit. It's like, hey, cool, man. You're entitled to your suffering, and I have yeah. no right to take that away from you. And you yeah. go for it, man. You know, grab and cling and be attached to everything you can possibly be attached to. And good luck with that and mm-hmm. have fun and, mm-hmm. you know, do it for a thousand lifetimes, man. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, good until for you, you learn, until you learn, right? Yeah. Like, well, that's the thing with like, um, you know, like uh, karmic loops or, you yeah, know, that term. the cycle of samsara, man. Yeah, you know, it's just like um, realizing that you're going to be presented with that thing like over and over again until you are able to learn that that thing has a hold on you for some reason or, you know, whatever reason that thing keeps presenting itself to you is because like that's like what you're living through, you know, you have to realize that in order to like break that loop, you know, and it's like, if you believe in like, um, you know, like the multiverse theory, you oh, know, yeah. and like different timelines and things like that. Rick it's, and Morty and shit. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. You know, and like, um, and then that kind of plays into like the, the quantum realm and like, you know, different like lifetimes and existences. And like, um, if you like want a thing, like, you can't just want a thing. You have to be the thing, you know? Like, if you, like, are searching for love, like, you're never going to find it. Yeah. You know? You have to be love. You have to, like, just accept. And then when, you know, you have worked your way past that cycle of, like, wanting and wanting, and you're just, like, living in the feeling of it, then that's when you are presented with it, you know? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. I find myself more and more just in love with everyone around me, like real intense feelings of it, man. It blows me away. And I never could have done that before, man. It was just, I had so much um, detest for humanity. Like I didn't want to be around other people and, um, you know, because everyone's just has so many issues and they, they react to situations poorly and they just, they, you know, there's so many problems in the world, man. And it's like when you see it from just a, um, a face value perspective of like, you know, why would we even exist in all this suffering? It's really hard to go through. But when you recognize that it's like it's a lot of like self-induced suffering through, um, you know, attachment and desire and, and the uh, attempt to attain some kind of thing mm-hmm. um, that isn't inherently part of you you know when you were born right because it's like you you come onto this place into this place and it's this beautiful paradise that we exist in right i mm-hmm. mean it's like you only need two things that's food and water and f- water falls from the sky food grows out of the ground it's literally fucking heaven man you are literally in heaven right now <laughs> yeah. and you don't need anything else right like we don't clothes is a societal concept man we don't need clothes shelter isn't a necessity right like there's ways you don't you just can be right and there's mm-hmm. plenty of people that just live outside and they're fine right i mean it's nicer to live inside i'm not saying that it's not nicer <laughs> right? but it's like there's this natural state of being that we can get to and then yeah. you start adding all this bullshit onto it and you mm-hmm. stack it and you stack it and you stack it and you think that all this bullshit's going to make you happy mm-hmm. and you think that you know if i have sex with every woman that ever existed you know, then I'll be the man. Then I'll really have done something with this life. Or if I get more money than everybody's ever attained, you know, or if I fucking kill more people than whoever fucking killed more people, you know, I'll be yeah. I'll be known forever, you know. And uh, it's just all this grasping and everything. And so you walk around the world and you see everybody just not understanding why they're ha- not happy and they're grasping and they're trying to 
fulfill every desire mm-hmm. their brain comes up with. It just starts throwing shit at their awareness constantly, left and right. What if we had this? What if we did this? You know, that girl's fucking hot. Let's go try to get that. I want a fucking burger. I want more money. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. I need, I need stuff, you know? Yeah. And so, and then you walk around in a place not thinking like, what a shithole this is. You have more like compassion for everybody's suffering. You're just like yeah, that definitely. poor son of a bitch. You know, I wish I could help him. I wish I could help him see yeah. that he doesn't need any of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that he's perfect exactly how he is right now in this moment. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And uh, it changed everything for me, that level of compassion. And again, it was a big motherfucking acid trip, man, that, <laughs> that took me to that place where yeah. I was basically, you know, I, I recognized, like, I understood the crucifixion of Christ, right? Like, that, it made so much sense to me because... I was such in such a this beautiful place of recognizing that I don't need anything and this body does not matter. And I was like, you could fucking you. I was like, you can destroy this body. It doesn't matter. You can't kill me. And there's like, there's no death. There's no reason to fear any of that stuff, you know. And this is just this amazing trip. And it was like I would literally let at, at that moment in time at that high of a high, you know, which mm-hmm. is basically where fucking Jesus was at, right? He's mm-hmm. like fucking throw me up on the crucifix i'm not attached to this body if it could prove to you in some way shape or form and help wake you up from this illusion fucking do it it doesn't matter man you know and um and that blew my mind that i was i mean that was literally the, the the processes in my head at that moment on that really intense one and i never lost that you know i mean yeah, I'm not gonna let you kill me now, but uh, <laughs> I'm still kind of like it still feels a little real to me, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you come out of it and you're just like, well, you know, maybe uh, I don't want to be crucified yet, but um, but I recognize that intense level of compassion. And yeah, that definitely. Yeah, was very real for me, and, and even for a moment. And that's the beauty of those psychedelics. You can attain those spaces of intense realization, and then. Even though, like, maybe the standards of it, like I'm saying, don't hold true uh, in perpetuity, you know, it's like there's you were still there, man. Yeah, you still definitely. experience that. Definitely, and yeah. It it pushes you through, and then I just love everyone so much and have so much compassion for everyone around me that it just it's hard for me to suffer at all at this point, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that uh, I wish I could give it to everybody for free. I'd give it to everyone for free if I could. Yeah. I was just that made made me kind of think of um, what Sean was saying uh, about like uh, it just being like your imagination, mm-hmm. you know, or like everything's my imagination. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but like in that moment, in that moment where like you're just not even connected to your imagination or thoughts to like have this realization that like everyone like deserves love and yeah. compassion, you know, like like. Where did that come from? You know what I mean? Like, because I wasn't even thinking. I was like out of my mind. Yeah. Right. But then that realization that like, you know, like the true essence of like, you know, like consciousness is like a loving awareness, you know, because I had one of those moments where I was like out of my mind and like. Not thinking, definitely not thinking, just like experiencing and like taking in and feeling, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was on the beach and I was just like, oh man, I was like, it's just all love. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's like, you know, I was thinking like, oh. That's it, man. Yeah, it's all love, man. The The universe is probably like um, the result of like two cosmic beings fucking or something and like that's love right there you know like we were we were birthed of love and like you know that's why i feel like i i feel like a crazy compassion like with people who like uh are like going through like addiction like cycles of addiction things like that you know what i mean like Um, like I had someone tell me like, oh yeah, like this person that I have known forever is like going through that and like, fuck them, you know? And I was like, they're suffering right now. Yeah. 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 And like, you could like definitely, uh, and you might definitely have to remove yourself from that person if like their, you know, addiction is causing you problems and things like that, but maybe like have some compassion, you know? Cause like, that's, 
from a place of deep suffering, you know what I mean? Like to to be, you know, constantly doing something to not be in this reality, to not be in this, you know, place presently, to like need and want to escape is definitely like some tr trauma built in there, you know? Oh yeah. And yeah. what it is, you know, it's like everyone's chasing that sense of love that we're talking about, right? Because it's your it's your true nature, man. You know, mm -hmm. before you could speak any language, you know, right when you were born and you come into this world, you know, and you look at anybody that's that's like one to four years old before they really have comprehension on anything, right? And they haven't really been constrained by the ideologies of society. They're just like, wow, man, you know, like, yeah. wow, look at how cool all this stuff is. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. They just love everyone and they just want to hug and yeah. kiss and like, say hi, 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 you know, yeah. that kind of, that's what you are, man. Yeah. That's what you are. Yeah. And you build this fucking bullshit identity around that you know yeah. and you you start adding all these fucking rules of how you're supposed to act and, so, and you, the people around you and society and your family everyone's doing this to you right they're tucking you into this little box and they go i don't like when you do that but when you do that it's great and you're like okay i'll fucking uh, don't do that again yeah. and I'll, only, I'll only do this thing real quick i'll do this all day long and it makes you happy <laughs> and you're walking around doing that all fucking day going i don't know why this isn't making me happy but it's making everybody else seems to like it yeah you know and uh and because you're just not being true to yourself mm -hmm. you're not being true to that love that yeah. pure essence of love that's within you yeah and that's what the addiction is, man. I've been, I, I, I've fucking been addicted to some drugs, man, and uh, it's rough. And you're always chasing that, man. You're mm -hmm. always just trying to find some form of love within yourself, something that can just make you feel at ease, you know, like, mm -hmm. and uh, and remove all this anxiety and un, uh, mistrust and like. Just, I just want to be in a comfortable place where I don't fucking have to think about all this bullshit anymore. My body doesn't hurt. And, you know, I just, I, I fucking just want it, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah. And you just chase it and you chase it and you chase it. And it's, it's always been right here. And that's yeah. the thing is you're thinking it's out there. You're thinking if I can get something from out here and bring it into this body that I exist in, yeah. then I will be happy. Yeah. Then I will stop suffering so much. And it's like, you got to let go of all these concepts and ideas that you think anything out there can do anything for you and just be with yourself, man. And you go through the process. And again, you have to feel all the pain and you have to dive into the emotion and you have to go all the way through it. Mm -hmm. It has to work itself out and, uh, and hiding from all that pain and not working it out and numbing yourself it only prolongs the process yeah and uh eventually you know you get to a place where you just be go back to being a child again that's yeah. what you want you want to go back to being this just innocent child within yourself and you can still be aware that the world's dangerous you still be aware of your social security number and paying yeah. your taxes and going to work on time but you do it in such a way that it doesn't define you and it doesn't impact you and create all this anxiety and depression you know you just go well i'm playing a game this yeah. is a game it's not to be taken seriously <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, yeah yeah definitely and i'm just gonna love everyone around me while i do it you know yeah. like because there's no reason to 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 add all this additional stress because it's all just in your head anyways it's all yeah. in your fucking head yeah and that took me forever to recognize the fact that i was making it all up you know, yeah. I was suicidally depressed, addicted to drugs, drinking too much, fucking eating like shit. And it was like, it was all bullshit. It was all a lie I was telling myself, man, you know? And mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't fucking believe it when I, I finally woke up to the fact that it's like, you, I'm full of shit. Uh, none of this is fucking real. And there's only love, man. Yeah, man. It's all I'll ever be. Yeah. And it's just like, and there's nothing to do. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like you play the game, don't play the game, go be fucking homeless. Who cares? You're gonna die, man. Yeah. You know, you're gonna die. There's nothing to you can't pile up a million fucking uh dollars and hang on to it and take it into the fucking afterlife with you. It's yeah. like just experience this moment. Yeah. Love everyone around you. Yeah. And and accept the fact that it could end at any any time. And yeah, it's definitely. fine. It's okay. Yeah. You yeah. gotta do some uh inner child work, man, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's like uh definitely uh 
That's like in that book, uh, The Body Keeps a Score, it was talking about uh, that's a, like a form of therapy that they do where, uh, you know, you like think of a thing like that moment that caused that trauma or, you know, you think back onto a thing uh, that brought you pain, or suffering, and you like, talk to yourself as if you were like that person, but you are who you are now, who's like aware that it's going to be okay. You know, and you like reassure your inner child that, you know, it's going to be okay. You know, like it's going to work out and like you got to reconnect with your inner child, you know, as they say, to really be, you know, able to like live in a way that's, you know, in most connected to your like highest self. Yeah, absolutely, man. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that's the game, you know, dissolve the ego, man. We just dissolve it away. Um uh, it's one of my favorite things that my Zen master ever taught me was uh, compassion isn't something that we work on. It's not something you develop. You can't add anything to yourself, man. He goes, once you get rid of all the bullshit and you finally recognize there is no self, all that's left is love and compassion. It's your natural state of being. It's all you ever were. You know, it's your moral compass underneath it all. You know, you always feel like even when you're just totally trapped in illusion and ego and you're there's this guiding principle underneath all your fucking, you know, your, your illusion, man, that that is leading you in some form of like good direction. And that's your true nature. That's the, the compassion that exists within all of us, man. And once you let it all go, it's just that's all that's left because that's all that's real. And it's just the love and the compassion and everything else is just psychological drama as sad guru says yeah that's you know, all you know you're just caught up in the psychological drama this movie that you keep writing in your head that's not really happening yeah and uh yeah uh, it's a beautiful thing man yeah man it's heavy yeah you know well i think uh, we went yeah it's already over an hour right now i'd say we go uh play some uh crystal bowls yes sir yeah let's do it yeah awesome yeah i dig it man thank you for having me dude you're welcome anytime bro absolutely we got to hang out more often honestly man yeah i think i found a new fucking friend today yeah definitely (laughs) man definitely i gotta come see you perform too man i'm really looking forward to it but we're gonna go we're gonna go see you perform right now yeah definitely So we'll take you upstairs to the uh to the photo studio and get it done awesome. and uh let me do a little bit of this uh, outro stuff we got alex yeah. ohm homie and you can check him out at instagram at ohm homie soundcloud at ohm homie uh youtube at ohm homie he's gonna be playing the high vibe fest uh and what was the date on that i wrote down the wrong date uh, may 6th through the 8th may 6th through the 8th uh definitely go check out ohm homie doing his thing and uh, continue to check out me doing my thing, man. You know, like uh, subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, go to my social media, support us on PayPal, man. You know, all that good stuff. So I can continue to uh, bring beautiful people onto the podcast, like my friend Alex here. And we can talk to you about crazy hippie bullshit. Yeah, yeah follow man. him if you haven't already. <laughs> so, and with that, man, this has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Love you, bud. Thanks for watching. Peace. Awesome, man. Sweet, bro.
you through the sample meditation. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.